there. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was a real, I don't know how many more times she can go with it. It's, it's taxing on everybody. To, how many more times she can what? She can go to, to Houston. So, it was really packed. Yeah, she's oh, yeah. oriented and oh, no. so she's not quite sure. The different surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, how are you? Good evening. Hey, my name is. Oh, there it is. Hey, thanks. How are you? Oh, to, I think these must be new. They, I thought they used to be on the bottom. Yeah, I'm sure you can fix. No, I just hope they work. Yeah, you may recall we're having some yeah. First off, I saw the light there. Okay. It was a very nice piece you put up. Uh, you sent us about um, the obituary from the paper in Lynchburg. So, yeah, uh, it was amazing. I was up there today. Really? Uh, it was amazing. The, the synagogue was. Oh, I got two minutes. Oh, yeah. Hey, you not so long either. Sorry. Good evening. Would you like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order? Monday, October the 2nd. And certainly want to welcome all of you that are here for us this evening. Uh, since, since I've uh, been mayor, I've been the practice that we open our meetings with a moment of silent meditation and it's not for the purpose necessary for anyone to pray or do whatever it's just an opportunity to take a few moments to reflect before we begin our business and I was telling the manager this evening I was up in my office before I came down just looking at the news and uh, we, we've had so many tragedies over the last few weeks uh, some natural with the hurricanes in Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico and uh, Mexico with earthquakes and uh, then last night the sort of human caused tragedy that happened in Las Vegas. Uh, so I just would hope that you reflect however you choose and we've also had one of our council members who's not here, Steve who recently lost his mother this past few, few days. So if you could just take a moment to reflect or meditate, uh, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You know, to talk about things that happen everywhere else that we've had our share of uh, incidents here in Durham also. But having said that, um, I'm going to ask Councilman Davis to read some pledge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk. <coughs> Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Councilmember Davis. Here. Councilmember Johnson. Here. Councilmember Moffitt. Here. And Councilmember Reese. Here. And Councilmember Shule is requesting excuse absence. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. We have several proclamations this evening, but uh, I want to start it off with a happy note. And we talk about things that are happening and around the world and 
in our state and in our city. We always talk about good things happening in Durham. And uh, we had the pleasure of having some of the good things happen with the Durham Bulls baseball team. Mm. And I invited George Abels. George? George, no. George and Mike Goodman and whoever else you want to bring in to come to our meeting this evening to show off and maybe tell us a few things about uh, what the Durham Bulls have accomplished. Uh, when, I, when I was talking to, to Michael and to the manager, I said, we ought to have a ticker take for Ray, but <laughs> these guys get in and get out so fast, it's sort of hard to coordinate that. But uh, I didn't want this to go unnoticed because obviously the Durham Bulls mean an awful lot to us in the city of Durham as they do around the region, around the state. So, George, if you don't mind if you could come and just share with us the good deeds that the club has accomplished. And of course, we all know about them, but it's good to hear them from. I call it George because he's he's the man that does all the stuff. He brought Michael along for to well, support him, right? Yeah, I've I've brought the boss along, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was a smart move. So, um, so thank you. Um, our we have two trophies because first we won the International League Governors Cup, which is um, is the more impressive trophy. They're back there in the in the corner by the door. Um, the the uh, original version of the Governor's Cup uh, is in the in the Baseball Hall of Fame in uh, in Cooperstown, um, so we get to keep a replica of it for one year, and uh, well, maybe we'll get to keep it. We'll win again. Um, and then the smaller trophy is the uh, is the national championship uh, trophy, uh, and we. Uh, so we won both of these just by happenstance in uh, playing in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, I spent a week in Scranton. And not to crack too badly on Scranton, but I came home really thankful <laughs> for Durham. Um, George Rothschild. I, uh, so, so I'll stop. I'll control myself. Um, so, that, so that's a that's a outstanding shot of the trophies over there. Um, we uh, we should have had a parade, dog on it, but uh, um, you know this has happened to us five times now. Uh, as you know, uh, all but one or two of the players, um, well, they don't live here, with the exception of a couple. Um, so as soon as the season's over, um, they go home. Um, so, uh, we'll try to do something later in the fall, uh, some sort of, uh, celebration, but we are, uh, proud to haul all of that hardware back to Durham and get that attention to the Bull City. I have, to, I have to take the mic from George. I just, <clears throat> I want to say how proud we are to have the Bulls in Durham. I mean that. Um, you know, one very unique trait about the Durham Bulls that, that you might not recognize unless you experience the minor league culture in other cities is that, that team, this team is beloved in Durham. You know, you can't go anywhere without seeing Durham Bulls gear, Durham Bulls hat, Durham Bulls this, Durham Bulls that, Durham Bulls license plates. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, that we're really proud of and, frankly, something we're really grateful for because it's a very unique trait in minor league baseball. You know, we're family entertainment, we're community pride, but we're also people proud of the team and proud of winning national championships and, and proud of, of what we do. And want y'all to know y'all are a big part of that. And y'all support long, you know, historically and, and moving forward is, is part of making this a, a continued special community asset. So, so we're really proud of that. We're thankful for that. We're gonna win it again next year or else everyone's fired. Yeah. 
<laughs> and that's it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks, gentlemen. I, I should have recognized uh, Mrs. Abel. Every time I go to the ballpark, she's she's always there, and probably is really the, the force behind what George is able to do. So, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Okay, we have um, National Disability Employment Awareness Month. I'd like the representatives from Parks and Recreation, if they would come forth. Uh, the proclamation reads, whereas workplaces welcoming of the talents of all people, including people with disabilities, are a critical part of our efforts to build an inclusive community and a strong economy, Whereas in this spirit, the city of Durham, North Carolina, is recognizing National Disability Employment Awareness Month this October to raise awareness about disability employment issues and celebrate the many and varied contributions of people with disabilities. Whereas activities such as Disable, the label, and the annual program celebrating employer, employers who regularly hire persons with disabilities will reinforce the value and talent people with disabilities add to our workplace and communities in the firm, North, 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 North Carolina, commitment to an inclusive community. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 2017 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month in Durham, hereby urge employers, schools, and other community organizations in Durham, North Carolina, to observe this month with appropriate programs and activities to advance this important message to people with disabilities are equal to the task. And with my hand in the corporate seal of the city of Durham, North Carolina, this is the second day of October 2017. I'm going to present this to you, and you can make remarks. Then I'll Thank you. Over here. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Um, our departmental mission is to play more, connecting our whole community to wellness, the outdoors, and lifelong learning. While working on this mission statement in 2016, the word whole was an intentional addition by staff to show our commitment to be inclusive of all of our community members. Our continued work with the EOEA and the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities are two examples of, part of, of partners both here in Durham and in North Carolina. Thank you, Mayor Bell and City Council for this proclamation, as well as your support of Disability Awareness Month. In keeping with the proclamation, I invite you and our whole community to disable the label hosted by DPR at Northgate Mall in September on Saturday, October 14th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Thank you. Next, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Cheryl Thomas, Community Outreach Coordinator for Durham Crisis Response Center. How you doing? Okay. Uh, the proclamation speaks to the fact that we care about safety, security, physical, and emotional well-being of our neighbors. We recognize that domestic violence has many faces, and we believe all individuals have the right to live their lives free of violence and fear. And whereas domestic violence is a serious, preventable public health concern involving physical, sexual, psychological, or emotionally aggressive behavior, as part of a systematic power, pattern of power control of one person over another. According to the National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, one in three women and one in four men report experiencing violence by an intimate partner in their lifetimes. And whereas we believe that everyone deserves a life free of violence, whereas we recognize that intimate partner violence has significant and long-term consequences for survivors, families, and community health outcomes, including the effects of trauma, depression, traumatic brain injury, and other chronic conditions, on productivity and well-being. Whereas in 2017, while Durham Crisis Response Center provided an emergency shelter to 147 women and children fleeing domestic violence for lack of space, DCRC directed 90 individuals to other shelters, illustrating the urgency to expand shelter services in our community. And DCRC answered more than 3,400 calls on the 24-hour English and Spanish crisis lines in addition to providing crisis intervention, counseling, court advocacy, and other services to over 1,500 victim survivors, with more than 14,000 volunteer hours supporting our mission, whereas ending domestic violence starts with education and awareness, changing gender and violence social norms, and mobilizing our communities, including men and boys, and our faith institutions, 
We urge our educators and agencies working with youth to teach, respect, consent, and healthy relationship. We encourage local government, health professionals, law enforcement, faith communities, and civic organizations to collaborate on creating a supportive and inclusive environment for survivors of domestic violence in Durham. We strongly can commit to a deliberate effort to ensure that every individual can access appropriate and affirming resources to address and end violence in our communities. Now, though, therefore, I, William V. Bilbao, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2017 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Durham. Hereby urge all residents to recognize the many faces of domestic violence by increasing awareness, taking actions to change the cultures, and working together to end the violence. I witness my hand in the Corporate Civil City of Durham. This is the second day of October 2017, and I'll present this to you for the comments you might have. Thank you so Thank you. much. Well, thank you, Mayor Bell and city council members, staff, and my colleagues that are here with me today. I'd like to say, um, again, thank you, Mayor Bell, for all that you have done for us and with us all these many years that you've been here as mayor. We will miss you. Uh, but I'd like to bring your attention to one item that Mayor Bell did speak about, and it was about those that were turned away from our shelter. We are now in uh, a crisis mode in that we are turning people away, and that is unacceptable in this county. We're asking uh, the community and our, our elected officials to join with us to try to help us to locate and, and to eradicate that situation within our system. Um, we would like to also say that we've come a long way this year, we've only experienced one death here in Durham County. One death is unacceptable as well. But uh, we had uh, one death, and her name was uh, Katrina Wright. And we have had over 54 deaths in the state. So I think that we have come a long way, and we still have a long way to go. And I think it's because of all the comprehensive services that we offer at Durham Crisis Response Center that that number is at that low point. And I want to thank all of the community members that have helped us to achieve what we have all these years. And I appreciate what you've done. And thank you, Mayor Bell, for your attention to detail as, it, as you help us to do what we have to do. I want to say that my executive director, Aurelia Sands Bell is here with me, and our board chair, Eric Moore, is with me here today. And uh, we all thank you for what you've done and what you will continue to do in the future to help us. Uh, next, we have. We got a picture? Oh, okay. We have some other happy things to celebrate. National Arts and Humanities Month, and Senator Woodard and Sherrod Rees, the Executive Director of Durham Arts Council, if you would join me. Where is the arts and humanities enhance and enrich the lives of all Americans? Whereas the arts and humanities affect every aspect of life in America today, including the economy, social problem, solving, job creation, education, creativity, and community livability. Whereas cities and states, through their local and state arts agencies and representing thousands of cultural organizations, have celebrated the value and importance of that culture in the lives of Americans and the health of thriving communities during National Arts and Humanities Month for several years. 
whereas the United States Conference of the Mayor has actively participated in National Arts and Humanities Month since 1984, whereas the United States Conference of the Mayor's National Arts Partner, Americans for the Arts, will again coordinate this year's National Awareness Campaign of Activities for National Arts and Humanities Months, <coughs> whereas the nation's 95,000 nonprofit art aid organizations, the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the nation's 5,000 local art agencies, the Arts and Humanities Councils of the 50 states, and the six U.S. jurisdictions, and the President of the United States have participated again this year in this national celebration. Now, therefore, I, William B. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim National Arts and Humanities Month in Durham, and hereby urge all citizens to take special notice of the service and witness my hand call for the City of Durham this second day of October. And I will present this to Sherry, and you can have your board chairman, Senator Mike Woodard, you can come up behind me. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bell. And thank you, Council Members and City Manager Bonfield. I'm Sherry DeVries, Executive Director of the Durham Arts Council, and I would like to encourage everyone here tonight and everyone in Durham to celebrate National Arts and Humanities Month. October is National Arts and Humanities Month, a coast-to-coast -coast collective recognition of the importance of culture in America. This was launched by Americans for the Arts 30 years ago and focuses on the arts at the local, state, and national levels, encourages individuals and organizations to participate in the arts, and allows governments and businesses to show their support of the arts, and raises public awareness about the role of the arts and humanities in our communities and lives. And we want to thank Durham, the city of Durham, for your tremendous support of arts and culture for many years. And thank you, Mayor Bell, for your great support of arts and culture. Ways that individuals can celebrate the arts this month. Participate in and show your art, a social media campaign for people in communities across the country, using posting your Instagram photos and videos to hashtag show your art 2017. And those will be featured nationally in the month long celebration. The most important thing is to enjoy and participate in the arts and cultural events. Grab a friend, go to a museum, a play, a festival, an outdoor concert, have kids, make it a family outing, try something new, take a creative class in writing, dance, painting, or whatever strikes your fancy. Enjoy the arts with people you love. Sing, play music, read a book, dance, or draw together. Write to your members of Congress, letting him or her know how important arts and arts education funding is to you, your family, <laughs> and your community. Here in Durham, North Carolina, 69 arts and cultural organizations, just the month of October, are providing over 630 arts and humanities events this month for the public to enjoy. From the Durham Arts Council to Scrap Exchange, the NCCU Art Museum, Durham Library, Duke Performances, the Nasher Museum of Art, the Carolina Theater, St. Joseph's Haytai Heritage Center, and many more. There's so much to enjoy in the arts and culture in Durham. So we invite you to celebrate with us. Thank you. Thank you. So I have to tell you a Centerfest story. On Saturday, I parked on the Parish Street lot, and as I walked up Church Street to get to Maine, I saw a couple coming out of the Church Street deck. And I could tell, as we say down home, they weren't from around here. They were what I call pibs, people in black. They were dressed in all black, long sleeves, black coats. And they looked a little lost when they came out of the deck. So I said, are y'all looking for Centerfest? And I guessed correctly. And I said, well, I'm headed that way. So as we walked along Main Street to get to the festival site, I learned that they were, had just moved to North Raleigh ugh, from Brooklyn. <laughs> They'd been here about six months. Well, they uh, decided to come to Centerfest, so I got them to the site. A couple hours later, they came through the gate where I was volunteering, and I asked them if they had a great time, and they said, yes, indeed, they really had. They loved Durham, and they really enjoyed the arts that they got to experience here in Durham. And the wife leaned over and said, and as soon as our lease is up, we're coming to Durham. <laughs> 
I share that with you just uh, to remind all of us uh, how much the arts and culture in this community is a magnet for people all around the region. Um, and we could not do Centerfest without the support of the city of Durham. So when we come each year, this is a great opportunity for us to once again thank the city of Durham for all your support of the Durham Arts Council, of all of our arts and culture, and specifically Centerfest. We didn't set an attendance record this year. We came just a few hundred shy of our attendance record from a couple years ago, but we did have a record number of artists this year, including for the first time our rising stars, 10 artists from Durham who were featured in a special part of the festival site. We continued our programming on Saturday night with uh, two bands uh, down at CCB Plaza, and if you missed Cool John Ferguson, you missed a great time. The plaza was covered up during Cool John's uh, performance. Um, we couldn't do those things without your support. From the administration, right on down through all the departments, and of course the council. We couldn't do it without the support we have from the police department, keeping the site protected and safe from Friday night on through Sunday night, uh, 24 hours. Solid waste, making sure that our streets are cleaned up Sunday night and Monday morning. Um, from uh, transportation for assisting us with uh, blocking the streets, providing parking amenities. So throughout the city, many departments are assisting us. So thank you again, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, and the administration for your support of Centerfest. We look forward to our 45th next year, 44th next year, uh, Centerfest. Thank you all very much. Last recognition, uh, the proclamation says, imagine a day without water. Uh, we have some people behind us that want to emphasize this. <laughs> you know, it's, it's sort of ironic that we, we have this, and uh, just earlier we were talking about the tragedies that have happened uh, in Florida and Texas, where, and Puerto Rico, where people were without water for so many days and, and weeks. Uh, but anyway, whereas water is our most valuable natural resource and one that is absolutely vital to the quality of life for all citizens of the city of Durham and Durham County, whereas Durham's water customers use nearly 27 million gallons of fresh, high-quality water every day, whereas dedicated city employees work every day to ensure delivery of this valuable commodity, by careful management of the water supplies, visible operation of the treatment facilities, and attentive maintenance of the distribution systems, whereas the critical infrastructure and investment needed to deliver this precious resource are too often overlooked, misunderstood, and unappreciated. And whereas changes in our climate due to extreme weather events are likely to place additional strains and pressures on our water supplies, whereas investing in our drinking and water, wastewater systems now will ensure a healthy and prosperous Durham community for many generations to come. And therefore, I, William Bell Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim the 12th of October, 2017, as a imagine a day without water in Durham. And hereby urge our citizens to take special note of this observance, recognizing that water is essential to our quality of life and economic competitiveness, and call on all citizens to consider the value of water for each individual, the community and economy of our city, in the hope they will never have to live a day without water. I further challenge our citizens to learn how to protect our waters from pollution, practice water efficiency and conservation in our daily lives, support efforts for improved water and sewer infrastructures, and become informed witness and involved in the local water issues. And again, witness my hand, Corporal City Seat of Durham. This is the second day of October 2017. We're going to present this to Don Greeley, our Director of Water resources and you're going to introduce our yep. good friend. Wayne Brown. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Bell and members of the City Council. Um, in bringing this item forward, we realize this, this would be the last special proclamation that Mayor Bell made on behalf of water management. So we'd like to thank him for all of his support over the years for our many celebrations, proclamations, and activities. So thank you, Mayor Bell.
Waindrop and I are honored to accept this proclamation on, on the behalf of more than 300 employees of the city's Department of Water Management who provide water and wastewater services to our over 270,000 customers, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Our department's goal is to ensure that each and every time our customers turn on their taps, clean, safe drinking water flows out. When we imagine a day without water, many of us think about our morning shower or cup of coffee or not being able to flush our toilets. Or have a day without water would be much more grim and frightening. Durham's firefighters would, not, would have no way to tackle blazes. Our city's hospitals and healthcare facilities would not treat their patients. Local schools would close and businesses would grind to a halt. And the list goes on. The devastation in the wake of the recent hurricanes also highlights the importance of drinking water plays in public health and safety. To encourage more people to imagine a day without water and to think about what it really means, we ask that on October 12th, Durham residents to pledge to give up just one item or action that relies on water. We have a special contest going on right now with some great giveaways. Durham residents can take the pledge online at www.durhamsavewater.org and enter to win one of five water efficiency prize packs or our grand prize, a brand new rain barrel. We are also promoting this, con this contest on Water Management's Facebook and Twitter pages. By the way, you might have noticed that some of Wayne Drop's friends who are part of our water efficiency and conservation staff are not here tonight. They are out of town at a National Water, Sp water Smart Innovations Conference, and rumor has it they may be collecting some hardware of their own to bring back to Durham. Uh -huh. We will keep you posted. Lastly, we'd like to thank everyone to remember that water is essential to keeping Durham a great place to live, work, and play. Can you imagine a day without it? Thanks again for your ongoing support of our efforts. Thank you. City. city management, I'm going to ask the city council also if we have any comments recognized from Wofford. Yes, if you'll indulge me for just a moment. Um, yeah, um, oftentimes, uh, when uh, two of our governing bodies, the school board, the board of county commissioners, the city council, we often overlap sometimes. And this is one of those occasions on um, Wednesday. Uh, October 4th is International Walk to School Day. It's a global event that involves communities from more than 40 countries around the world walking and biking to school on the same day. It began in 1997, and over the past 20 years, it's gone from one-day event to a long-term effort to create places where children have more opportunities for physical activities, and everyone feels a little more connected. Today, thousands of schools across America from all 50 states in the District of Columbia participate every October. This year, Lakewood Elementary in Durham, our very own Lakewood Elementary, our Lakewood Elementary, will serve as North Carolina's official media event for Walk to School Day. That's the state, um, it's serving as the center for the state. The school expects 200 students, parents, and community members to participate. And, um, and it ties in because the city of Durham's committed to making streets safer for everyone, including students, to walk and bike. Benefits of walking and biking include good exercise and physical activity. The, it helps children build strong bones, muscles, joints, and decreases the risk of obesity. And active kids are more likely to become active adults. Less traffic congestion and reduced emissions are part of the environmental benefits, and this ties to the City of Durham's Vision Zero Durham initiative. 
which you all might recall, the transportation department is heading up. It's to make the streets safer for all of us, including students on bikes and on foot. Vision Zero Durham aims to eliminate deaths and severe injuries on Durham roadways down to zero by implementing the 5E strategy in engineering, education, enforcement, evaluation, and encouragement. The city is continuing to invest in bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure in order to diversify the transportation uh, options that people have. We have 44.3 miles of bike lanes currently, and we're adding 8.9 miles this coming year. We have more than 20 bicycle and pedestrian projects currently in design, and will certainly soon be constructed, leveraging more than $20 million of federal and local funding. Additionally, $15 million has been allocated to the construction of sidewalks, identified in the recently adopted Durham Bike Walk Implementation Plan. So another thing I want to tell you about is that our very own Transportation Department is working with Durham schools to teach traffic safety. So on September 13th, members of the department visited Lakewood Elementary School and taught a traffic safety lesson to the entire kindergarten class. And at the end of the lesson, our director, Terry Bellamy, led all the students in a game of red light, green light. <laughs> So the Transportation Department continues to work with Durham Public Schools to make traffic safety accessible to all students. And last, I want to say is the city is doing its part, but each of us individually have our own role to play in making Durham safer for people on bikes and people on foot. Don't drive distracted, and whatever you do, don't text when you're behind the wheel. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Recognize Councilman Reese. Thank you. Uh, I should also <coughs> thank Councilmember Moffat for reminding us that um, we all have a part to play in making uh, our schools safe places for our kids. So um, I think often we tend to think, oh, that's just somebody else's problem because we're the city council. But I appreciate you bringing that up. Also, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to apologize for horning in on your photo with Wayne Drop there. Um, Wayne, Wayne Drop is near and dear to my heart, uh, and the heart wants what the heart wants. And so I had to go get that photo <laughs> taken. I appreciate your patience. Speaking of the heart, Mr. Mayor, I hope you'll indulge me for just a minute or two. Um, I had the opportunity to travel to Lynchburg, Virginia this morning and spend some time with our colleague, Steve Shule. As you mentioned earlier, and as many of you may know, his mother passed away over the weekend. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend her funeral today at their uh, family synagogue, and I have to say, it was one of the most emotional um, events I can remember uh, attending in quite some time. I, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, Roselle Shule and her life. Um, some of you may know that Steve's father He's a former state senator from Lynchburg, served almost 20 years in uh, the state legislature representing that community. But as is often the case, uh, it's uh, really an open question whether or not an elected official or their life partner is the one that's contributed the most to the community. I think that'll be an open question for me and my wife as we go uh, through our time in Durham. But uh, with respect to uh, Steve's mom, uh, Roselle, uh, she was a faculty member at Lynchwood College, for, Lynchburg College for, uh, over for almost 20 years. Uh, served on the Board of Trustees there for 36 years, including four years as the chair of the Board of Trustees. Um, she founded the Lynchburg League of Women Voters. She served as the first president of their uh, local synagogue where her service was held today. Uh, she served on a number of uh, Blue Ribbon Commissions dealing with education. Uh, and just several years ago, she founded uh, Beacon for Hope, which is an organization uh, somewhat similar to Made in Durham uh, that works with uh, high school kids uh, to figure out kind of what their next step would be, whether it be apprenticeships, occupational uh, counseling and training, um, and uh, got guidance counseling for uh, moving on to college and college admissions and, and that sort of thing. Uh, that was sort of her passion project at the end of her life. In any event, I thought uh, it might be appropriate today as, uh, as our colleague is not with us and is sitting Shiva right now and tomorrow night for his mother uh, with his family in Lynchburg that we just honor um, his mom's contribution to her community. And um, and so I appreciate you giving me that time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, thank you, John, and thanks for sharing that information with us. Uh, as Steve has said, you know, his mother was his rock, and mm -hmm. very spoken to that. Are there other comments? Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, among other things, yesterday I had the honor of attending uh, a pastoral installation service at Fisher Memorial United Holy Church. And the special thing about it is that uh, the new pastor 
is an employee in our water management department, and his name is Elder James Blake. And um, <clears throat> I told um, Elder Blake that I could not tell him what to do since he's a city employee. But while I was in the church, I told him some things that he needed to do <laughs> <laughs> to help clean up the um, uh, evil kinds of things or ill kinds of things from Fayetteville and Umstead to Umstead and South Roxbury, and he accepted that charge <laughs> willingly, so I thought I'd better share with you that I did ask him to, to do that in the church, not in City Hall. I congratulate him for his work. Yeah. Well, thanks again for sharing that information, Melissa. Other, other comments? I can ask Councilman Margaret. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, um, I want to remind folks, um, I know everybody in the room is cognizant of this, but if anybody's watching that may not be thinking about it, it is election season. We have a primary on October 10th, which is before our next council meeting. So I want to remind folks the importance of voting. We'll be electing uh, three city council members and a mayor's seat, a majority of the council. And um, there are uh, early voting sites open now, and of course all the precincts will be open on October 10th. So there's no reason not to vote. Get out and vote and do our civic responsibilities. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there are no further council remarks. I recognize the city manager for prior items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. No priority items. Likewise, City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. Likewise, the City Clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll proceed with the agenda. First part of the agenda is consent agenda. Items may be approved with single vote unless a member of the audience pulls that item. We'll discuss it later. I'll read the title of each one of the consent agenda items. Item one is the Board's Committees and Commission attendance reports for the period of July 1, 2016 through June 30, 2017. Item two, the mayor pro tem would ask that be pulled as a resolution memorializing Effie J. McDonald's field to be done at another time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, item three is a contract amendment number four for North and South Durham water reclamation facilities process improvements. <coughs> Item four is phase one construction of North and South Durham water reclamation facilities process improvements. Item five is the contract with MAID in Durham to support business engagement for youth. Item six is the contract with Eckert Youth Alternatives, Inc. to deliver services for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, known as WIOA Youth Program. Item seven is sewers only extension agreement with Fletcher's Chapel United Methodist Church to serve 1919 Fletcher's Chapel Road. Item eight is the contract ST 266 for 2018 brick paver repair. Item 15 is Durham Open Space and Trails Commission appointment. Item 16 is an item that can be found on the general business agenda. Uh, I entertain a motion for approval of consent agenda items as stated. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you over the vote? Close the vote. Passes six to zero. Thank you. We move to the general business agenda, item 16, the revised City of Durham social media policy for elected officials and their appropriate boards. Who's going to have that present? Okay. I agree. Who's going to have the presentation of this? Okay. Um, answer any questions. Okay, I recognize Council. Beverly Thompson, Public Affairs Director, City Manager's Office. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. I recognize Councilman Moffitt. Yeah, I don't have a question. I just wanted to comment that I thought I wanted to, um, really appreciated the process at the work session where um, everybody worked, I thought, pretty collaboratively to come up with a consensus. I realize there may be issues that need to be still need to be resolved. I'm not suggesting that it's completely done. I just wanted to appreciate the process that we used and uh, thank people for it. Thank you. I can ask this. Do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, do I, 
I just want to, I just want to thank uh, the staff uh, in public affairs for the work that you did on it. And I knew you were updating the policy for, for our employees, and I'm glad you included us in this process. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no questions or comments, I entertain a motion on the item. So, so moved. Second. Then properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. Passes six to zero. Thank you. Thanks, staff, again. Are there any other items to come before the council tonight? If not, we're adjourned at 744, and you can all go get your dinner. Ice cream. <laughs> Getting ice cream tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.